So what I was trying to say there, clumsily, was um, what if an alien civilization did to us what the settlers did to the Native Americans? Um, not a big point, but I felt pleased with it because it was the first time that I'd actually made any sort of statement, even a feeble one like that. And uh, so when I moved on, I eventually got headhunted by um, the Americans and uh, went over there and was given a 24 page book to do every month. And it's exactly the same as doing a five panel strip. The same discipline still applies. <coughs> you've, just, you've just got more pages to do it in. So you can, you can do more things. You can bring in more subtle effects. You can tell bigger stories. Um, as long as you've started from that basically disciplined point of being able to tell a story as briefly and effectively as possible then you can scale that up until you reach the tragic position that I'm in today where I'm working through, I'm on the last three chapters of this gigantic novel called Jerusalem that um, I was at one of uh, Robin Ince's um, Infinite Monkey Cage things they were having a, I think it was a concert at the uh, Hammersmith Apollo last year and in the green room I was talking to uh, Professor Steve Jones, the biologist and he was saying, what are you doing these days? And I said, I'm doing this huge book. I said, I've just got past the two-thirds stage and it's over half a million words. And he said, did you say half a million words? And, and I said, yeah. And he said, you do realise that that is longer than the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I hadn't, but I thought, well, I, I hope better. <laughs> More socially useful. <laughs> but um, uh, how are we doing for time? Where are we now? What, sorry, what, what time? Five past, seven. Five past seven. Okay, so I suppose that, that is the cue. Um, have I actually said anything about writing there? I, I, I kind of got sidetracked with the stories of my, my vanished youth, didn't I? But, but I mean, you know, just a sum up about, about writing. Um, we, the world, in my opinion, does not need any more career writers. Um, when William Burroughs died, I remember that J.G. Ballard, uh, himself a brilliant writer, uh, he said, with William Burroughs passing, we have lost one of the last writers. And now all we are left with is the career novelists. Now, I know that that sounds a bit snooty, doesn't it? Sounds a bit elitist. But I think that the point he was making was it's writers that we need. Um, it's people who've got a unique individual voice and are prepared to put the work in to develop that voice until they can use it more effectively, until they can actually say the things that our culture clearly needs to hear. We, we don't need people who, yes there will always be people who are just in it for a living, but I'm not concerned about those people. I wish them well, but I'm not particularly concerned about them because they're not going to be enriching culture. At best, they're probably just going to be recycling it. Um, I think that what this world needs is more artists, more writers, more people who have got an individual voice, who are saying something unique. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you're, whether you make a lot of money out of it, um, whether you get famous. That is not success in artistic terms. I mean, you only have to look. Yeah, you could have written Fifty Shades of Grey, couldn't you? <laughs> and then you'd be rich and famous. But I would not say that you would be successful in artistic terms. Um, so that's what's needed. What's needed is a lot of dedication to 
expressing your imagination, expressing the ideas that you've got in your head, developing that imagination, because it basically, it's just, it's, it's like a muscle. You develop a muscle through a constant exercise. The same thing goes for the imagination. You know, if you work on having ideas every day of your life, and starving to death is a great incentive <laughs> to, to having ideas. If you actually work as a, as a, a creator every day of your life, it doesn't matter whether you even sell that stuff. I mean, and these days, there are plenty of opportunities to self-publish, to get your work out there. Um, it will enrich you. Just actually doing that work, it will change and enrich you. And if you are good enough, it will potentially change and enrich the world. That is the reason why people should be writing. Um, yes, it would be nice just to to make a living out of it. But always, and yes, when I started out, I haven't got any highfalutin ideas about what I wanted to do with writing other than pay the rent next month. That is the harsh reality. But I was determined that once I got more freedom, that I would use that and would genuinely try to tell the stories that I wanted to tell rather than the stories that people wanted me to tell or expected me to tell. Um, which has led to my current isolated, um, it's a bit like Hitler in the bunker, I suppose, <laughs> really with me those days. But, uh, well, take that as a warning then, you know. So if you don't want to end up like me, then so just do lots of commercial work that uh, you'll probably end up a lot wealthier than I am, but um, I think poorer in spirit. At least that's what I've tried to convince myself. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's throw this open. I believe we've got uh, some people with uh, microphones. So if... All right, question over there. Hi, um, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, the John D. Opera project that you started working with Damon Arbor with and a little bit about why you left the project. Ooh, well, yes, I certainly could. Um, <laughs> yeah, about um, 18 months, uh, two years, no, probably more than that now. I just started doing uh, my magazine, Dodge of Life.